And we are back with another motherfucking Black with No Cream podcast. New episode every Sunday. I'm your host, Ben Haggerty, a.k.a. Ben Real Verse World. On today's episode, I sit down with up-and-coming rapper, singer, songwriter, producer, Oliver Francis. Oliver is from Columbia, Missouri, and has had an explosive past two years on his YouTube channel. His videos have gained over 33 million views. Million. And he has a very simple explanation for how he was able to pull that off. We also talk about how his early years in punk bands sparked his inspiration to do more and his opinion on staying independent versus signing with a major label. This episode is like really interesting to me for this podcast because this is the first person I've ever done that I never knew before this. Like I didn't know Oliver until now. I do now because of this interview, but I didn't know anything about him. My homie Anthony is on tour with him. He's a photographer. He's his videographer. Um, they happened to be on tour, so I invited them to swing through, and they were willing to both come through and, and record the podcast. I'll do Anthony's episode next week. Um, but it was cool because it was like this was literally our first conversation with each other. I had a little bit of time before to play some of his music to understand like what he sounded like, what he was into. But other than that, I had no prior, prior knowledge of Oliver or his career, so it was really cool learning about that in real time. Um, I also got to go check out a show the next night down the street from my crib at the Roxy and he just shut it down. His show was hyped. All the kids that were there were going crazy. It's, it's nuts to see what he was able to form from YouTube specifically. It's insane. If this is your first time tuning into the podcast, you're probably wondering what does Black Window Cream stand for? Black Window Cream is a private content creator group fueled by caffeine, or at least I take my coffee Black Window Cream, but you can drink or not drink whatever caffeine you fuck with and still be a part of our community. We are a private group on Facebook open to creators of all kinds, aka if you make videos, if you're a photographer, if you do marketing, management, editing, dancing, etc, 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 all creators are welcome. Our private group has grown rapidly. We have a shit ton of members working together by sharing content, asking for feedback, passing tips and tricks along to one another with the goal of becoming the best motherfucking content creators on earth. And you can join our group if you want by going to blackwindowcream.com slash join. We would love to fucking have you. Please join. If you're interested in supporting Black Window Cream, please go to blackwindowcream.com slash merch. We have hats, shirts, stickers, pins, and all that shit available in the store. I appreciate anyone who picks up some merch. If you don't have the funds, I totally get it. There's another way you can support. Obviously, share a link to this podcast with as many people as you possibly can. And please hop on iTunes and leave me a review. Every review helps this podcast grow and helps me understand as a host like what to do better and shit. I appreciate you. All right, that's it. Enjoy the work week. Keep creating. Make sure to tune in every Sunday for a new Black Window Cream episode. And without further ado, I bring to you my interview with Oliver Francis and the most epic podcast intro ever created right motherfucking now. Attention. If you stop this podcast recording at any time, you will die. I don't want to die. Do you want to live? Yeah. You have 24 hours to share this podcast with five people or you will die. I'm kidding, you won't die. You're just weak shit for not sharing. And the winner of the best motherfucking podcast goes to... Goes to... Black with no cream. What do you think? It's so fucking dumb and so fucking Ben Haggerty. I knew you'd say that. Alright, we're fucking back with another Black with no cream podcast. I got a special guest today. We're brand new friends, Oliver Francis. How's it going, Doc? I'm all right, man. Chilling, yeah. chilling. Oliver's on tour right now. How, how many days are the tour? Shit, I don't know. It was seven dates. Seven? So yeah. out and about all over the... Yeah, it lasted about... We did a week on the East Coast, and then we went home for a week for Thanksgiving, and then we did two weeks headed west. Dope. Yeah. yeah. We're on the last leg of that right now. So who books that for you? Um, my guy Zach Bluestone at Paradigm Booking Agency. Paradigm, nice. It's a good one, right? Yeah, certainly. Good people. So I know you through my homie Tony, mm-hmm. and we're gonna get another podcast with Tony later. Mm-hmm. He's your photo guy, your video guy. Mm-hmm. He's the little genius behind all that shit. Yes, yes. But I want to talk with you and kind of learn about your story because I want to figure out where you, how you got to where you are. Right, right now you're bubbling because now I'm just by him i'm seeing the content about you or whatever and i've started looking you up and now i'm hearing more and more people talk about your name so has that been more recent the exposure uh yeah it's been like a slow burn like over the last how how many years uh this is my second year doing it like well i've always like rapped and made rap songs but i never really like i was always in bands so like i put all my energy into that Mm. and then um like late 2015 i was like okay well i'm gonna start taking the rap shit real serious right right, and uh so yeah it's been like Two, it's been like two years. Dope. This is my second year, nice. 2017. Professionally. Right. Cool. So go back earlier. 
I know you had talked about making music and you were traveling and like touring and playing in punk uh-huh, bands and uh-huh. shit. Go like grade school and shit. Like, were you always yeah, yeah. kind of into punk music? Um, yeah, certainly. I was in my first band. I was like eleven years old. Eleven. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up playing like music in church. My mm-hmm. parents played the music in church. Dope. And uh, my parents were musicians, so I was raised by musicians. I played guitar and drums my whole life. That's sick. So yeah, that's that's how I got into music. Then um, probably my freshman year of high school, which was like 2007, I think, I was like, okay, well, if I want to be a professional musician, I'm going to have to learn how to record music. So like 2007, I got a laptop and uh, a microphone and an interface and started to learn how to engineer and produce music. What was the first program you were using? What was it back then? Audacity? Yeah. Or something? Something really trash. Who, but who did... Your parents weren't recording? They were just performing, right? Yeah, yeah. My parents didn't know anything about recording. So how'd you figure it out? Um, how'd you find out what you needed? Just the internet and yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it took a lot of experimentation and right, right. that type of thing. Uh, you know, it, it took a long time to get to where I am now. I believe that. Yeah. So this slow climb to to where you are at now but it's it started by in your house you were just making the music there yeah and that's what i still do for sure i do everything 100 percent myself what Not, like the whole process yeah i uh i sit in my bedroom i make an instrumental i write it i record it i go back fix it that's dope and then i me and tony do a video tony shoots it i edit it we put it on youtube on to the next one yep sick so yep. when you were doing the punk music and shit the band started at, you're saying it started around 11 years old, or you were um, like, not to like 15? Well, I was in a lot of bands between like, when I was 11 and like 2015. Yeah. Like I was in numerous bands. Bands are, bands, if you can keep a band together for a year, like you're, you're doing, doing it. something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Um, it's it's like, funny. it's like having a, it was like I was pushing my dream on a bunch of guys who didn't really want to do it. Which is very, this is funny because he had, Tony texted me like before this and just was like, I was like, anything I should like know about? And he described you and I was, I just responded to him like, he kind of reminds me of me Mm because we all, that's how I know him Uh is from like punk hardcore scene and like going to shows all the time and shit. Got you. From Iowa, so we're not far and we would go to Como all the time and you're from, is that where you're from? Yeah, born and raised. Is Columbia, Missouri? Yeah, well, I I like uh, I was raised like 15 minutes south of there in mm. a town called Ashland, Missouri. But Columbia was like, I went to church in Columbia. Like I had, you know, friends in Columbia. Yeah, that was where you went to do anything. Right, right. right. So like, and then um, when I graduated school, I moved straight there. Damn. Yeah. Did Ashland, Missouri, get like fucked up in a tornado or something? Was no, it? that was Joplin. Joplin. Damn. Yeah, it got wrecked. How man. far is that from you guys? Three hours. Oh yeah. Four hours. We drove, we were on tour. Do you know Expire? Yeah. So I would I would tour with Fuck them yeah. and do all their shit. Uh-huh. And we were touring and we went through Joplin, I think maybe it was after St. Louis or yeah. something. And it was like right after that shit and it was yeah. just fucking flat. It was like, tragic, man. Damn, that's crazy. Super tragic. Yeah, tornadoes are very real out in the Midwest. Yes, yes. Yeah, and we were in the alley of it. Yeah, I've been very fortunate not to have any run-ins. Have you seen any? Knock on wood. No, never. Never seen any? Nah. Damn. Mm, not like one touchdown and like wipe shit out. No, never. It sucks because not I don't have the capacity to have three microphones and you're sitting over here. Tony's behind. <laughs> He's got to back me Tony's up. Like chilling. <laughs> I know. And I want to be like, have you seen it? We'll talk. All right, damn, that's fucking hard. That's a challenge. That's a, uh, yeah, man. That's funny because I like coming up in our music, I felt the same way. Like it would be, you'd be with a group of people and try to create some shit. And it was mm-hmm. fun at the time because you had nothing to worry about. But as you grow older, more and more people have more like opportunities for them outside of music mm-hmm. and you see the split happen. The right. split's like not easy to deal with. And how 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 do you usually handle that? Did you make like, Um for me it was like uh, uh I was going to do music and be broke or I was going to do music and be successful. Mm-hmm. There was no like I I could never not do it. Right. Like so yeah, so basically, I my band broke up like when I had worked really hard on, and then uh, how long was that going for? Probably like three or four years. That's but, a fucking long but time. But I mean, yeah, but that was like we didn't tour regularly. We did. There was numerous hiatuses mm. throughout that time. So I, uh, I just is like I kind of fell out with those dudes, and I was kind of like in a place where like, what am I gonna do? Um, I did a lot of like remix and mashup stuff. Yeah. It's like really how I got started with like hip hop production. Mm -hmm. Um, So then I was like, okay, well, 
I know how to do this. Right. I know how to record vocals. Like, I'm going to put my vocals on top of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was looking on your uh, YouTube channel, and I like to scroll all the way to the mm-hmm. first videos. Mm-hmm. One was just, like, you guys walking around a creek, so mm-hmm. I just kind of moved Yeah, yeah. Side. Uh, but there was a couple that I thought were going to be you rapping, but it was just, like, mashups, and it was, yeah. like, a Wiz Khalifa mashup. And yeah. So you started making those. Did you ever go to college? No, nah, never. Not one so day. So this is, like, that was 2013. How old were you? Fuck, you know? I don't know. I don't. I can't math. Uh, I can't math either. I'm 25. 25. Now, I think. So you're like 19 or something. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe ish or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I was like living at. I was either living at my uncle's house or living at my homie's mom's house when I was doing that. Yeah. And then um, I saved some money and I got me and my mom an apartment because my mom was not doing very well mm. and um, she was like living in her hometown. So I saved some money and I got me and her an apartment in Columbia. And that's where I started rapping, like, for real, like, trying to, like, I bought a camera, and I was, like, I looked at, like, um, like, Bones, or, like, uh, Lil B, yeah. and I was, like, okay, I'm gonna saturate YouTube with videos, like, mm. that was my goal, like, videos was definitely, like, of course I wanted the music to be cool, right? but videos was definitely, like, the the focus like i made a song right. so that i could make a video what made you think of uh that at such like to to take them and analyze what they were doing it's hard as first off it's hard when you're broke right mm-hmm. to make a fucking video yeah right so were you who was doing the videos at the time uh my friends. girlfriend your girlfriend yeah yeah my girlfriend was like well she's the one who made me like we were looking at some music um because she was really into like my remixes mm-hmm. um she thought that was really tight and um we were, like, looking through my songs, and she was like, yo, that's your best song. And I was like, the one of me rapping? And she was like, yeah, that's, like, really good. You should do that. So um, she kind of made me decide, like, okay, well, that's the lane I'm going to go with. And then I just gave her the camera. Like, the first video we did, it was, like, super cold, and, like, it started raining, and we got in a fight. And she was like, this sucks. And I was like, <laughs> how awkward. And now it has, like, a million views. Are you serious? Yeah. Holy shit. Are you still with her? Uh, no, no, no. Well, shout out to that chick yeah. for fucking setting it up. Yeah, yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, we're still cool, though. Like, that's for real? Yeah, that's yeah. That's dope. Because she, I mean, she kind of, she helped me get here, like, for sure. It's crazy. Yeah, so, like, we did, so me and her would do videos, and then, and she doesn't know how to use a camera. I was going to say, I don't know how to use a camera. We did, we had no them? idea what we were doing. Wow. We were using, like, a Nikon D3200, mm-hmm. is that right? With, uh, like, a kit lens. Right. That like, you just picked up? Yeah, like, a, the lens came with the body. I got it at Walmart. And you were just Black making Friday. videos. How were you saying? <laughs> so the real cheap shit. Like yeah. you found the best deal. How yeah. did you get, how did you get like your first bit of exposure? Were you just sending them off to blogs or were you just up, no, up, 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 No, I never really got any exposure. Nothing? Yeah, still even. But I mean, that motherfucker got a million views. Yeah. So um, eventually it picked I up. I just built a fan base, man. I just, I, a lot of people let other people upload the videos and let other people do their videos. I kept everything in house. I learned how to make videos editing skate videos. Mm, like same. Just growing up. Yep. So, um, so I knew how to edit videos and I loved doing it. Like, so yeah, I just bought that shitty camera. Um, and we just go, you know, in the field, wherever somebody's apartment, we go in the <laughs> woods, we go get high, sit in a parking lot. Like, and shoot a video. So wait, did you end up finishing the video that got a million views? What was that song called? Uh, L W T G G. Okay, you heard that. It's so an if acronym you want, for what? Lean with the gray goose. Ooh. Yeah. I don't condone drug use anymore. But still, that's that's a nice catchy title. Yeah, I was a kid. I was nineteen. People that do lean, it, it's like an interesting. Uh, it's just like heroin, man. It's very weird, dog. Like I don't know why. I have homies that do lean and shit, and it's mm-hmm. always like. I just seeing them at their max state. Yeah, it just knocks you out, man. I'm like, what the fuck? It's not fun, man. Push you to sleep. But yeah. Yeah, that's fucking weird. So anyway, okay. So prior to, um, I like this question because you come from this punk background, which I think instilled a majority of my morals and like mm-hmm. uh, my work ethic and my understanding of life at an early age because while I'm out touring, like, you know, we were just talking about your touring right now in a Sprinter van. You're like, it sucks, but we joked and like, it's better than a 15 or 12 yeah, passenger. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's the upgrade version. I remember touring and being like, damn, dude, I hope someday I can fucking yeah. ride a Sprinter. I remember watching Mac Miller's videos and he had a Sprinter and mm-hmm. it was like a Mercedes and I had the Xbox and I'm like, damn, I just want that fucking... Yeah, the gear is like the, the best part. 
You what? don't need a trailer. Oh, yeah. You don't have any gear. You got a laptop. Which That's coming fire. from punk bands and shit, you exactly. have to tear down drums That's and do fire. a worst. <laughs> God, that was a worst. But yeah. touring, like, what what would you say out of, like, the punk and the hardcore music was, like, the most valuable thing that you walked away with? Not saying walked away like you ever walk away from that music, because even though I don't avidly go to shows or listen to mm-hmm. punk and hardcore anymore, I still feel like mm-hmm. I'm a part of that culture. Yeah. What do you think, like, that did for you as far as this? Um, I, Well, I feel like um, in that niche genre of music, um, you kind of expect to walk away with nothing. Mm. You kind of expect to be forgotten. Your music... Your music will last, but it's not going to pay your bills forever. They're going to be the kids, the diehard kids who loved it and supported it. But at the end of the day, like you're not, you're not going to be a superstar. Right. You're not going to be a millionaire. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like going from that into rap music, um, now it's like, I don't want to sign a deal. I don't need, I don't need a private plane. I don't need a fucking yacht. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I just need to take care of my people. I want to have control of my music. Like, I I want to keep everything. I'm not going to let anybody edit my videos. I'm not going to let anybody shoot my videos. Yeah. Like, it's, it's I'm going to keep it in-house. Right. I'm going to maintain that um, creatively, especially. Yeah, yeah. And just, you know what I mean? I'm not going to let anybody in on it mm. who's not, like... Trustworthy or family yeah, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man, I feel like that's that makes sense. And I think that that is going to help save your career. Mm-hmm. Like, cause you could be popping right now and I'm sure you're getting talked to by labels and getting reached out. This is like the point and where that happens. Right, right. right. And, and those people will just fuck it up. Just fuck it up. Right. Exactly. And damn, man. like put a bunch of pressure on me and like, and alter your shit. You know right, what I mean? Right. As soon as, I mean, with money, like, I mean, it'd be exactly. nice. It'd be nice to have the tour bus right now, but yeah, I'm going to ride with the sprinter because it's going to eventually pay off. And yeah, damn. So, coming into hip hop was that like an easy transition for you like yeah, i know definitely. you it was easy yeah i like rapped on the playground growing up oh, okay like, so you been rap doing... was like a guilty pleasure for me like well, not being a fan of it um shit i don't know like as a kid like you just M&M. always had it around yeah like, yeah of M&M course and shit like that like, right. definitely um yeah for sure so yeah i always wanted to rap always my whole life mm-hmm. i always 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 wanted to rap but like getting into it were you experience any like kickback from like that punk community like being like no nah, in a cell a weird way no nah, not at all like um there's like no scene where i live for oh, music really? at all so like people still don't know who i am where i live what do you mean like, wait, no, wait where are you no, at right now you're in columbia, columbia still. yeah okay. like nobody's ever like oh oliver i fuck with your shit i seen your videos like that never happens do you ever go do you go to punk shows anymore no nah, not really oh, okay, there's not really punk shows where we live anymore mm. now that you know damn. it just doesn't happen damn yeah it's like there's a lot of like really low key like crust punk shows and stuff like really? yeah but nobody like nobody really tours through Columbia much. My one of my homies who was on the podcast earlier he does like ASAP uh, Ferg's photography and shit. Uh-huh. His name's Adam. He's from uh, Minneapolis. Uh-huh. And he like still throws the shows out there and he still has found a way to keep that shit alive. Yeah. And he shoots like the illest hip hop artists. Like uh-huh. he's on tour with those dudes all the time. Yeah, I feel like punk rock and hip hop are like this, man. Super it's like tight. fuck the police. I cuz I did parents that. off. Yeah, it was. You know it was I mean? like always that attitude and like fucking shit up, but I feel like there's this weird line in hip hop where I always love it when I find someone that comes from like the same background as me cuz like I did I came from that shit and did like melodic indie mm-hmm. punk shit like that and mm-hmm. then went into hip hop too. And mm-hmm. I we would do the same stuff and whatever. And then when I got out here videos popped up first before music Mm-hmm. as far as opportunities go so i right, just jumped right. on this but like coming from it i remember like trying to transition and people were like it's cool and I, we even played punk shows mm-hmm. and i and i thought that was received so well but then as soon as we tried to like build it bigger than a punk mindset as far mm-hmm. as like i want we want to tour we want to get like cooler shit and like spend more money on shows and, right, like, right, right. it felt like different like i don't feel like i got the reception from that family but i feel like I don't know if it was just a neglect or if people only have a certain perception on music. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, do people, like, depict your music as if, like, you're trying to be something you're not? Uh, Definitely. Like, that has happened. Um, That's, like, a big part of, like, how, going back to, like, the song title about Lean. Like, um, as I've done this, mm-hmm. um, being in the public eye and dealing with, like, constant internet scrutiny, I've, uh, like, completely tried to be more honest Mm. in the music not not fake anything you know what i mean like because um people always want to you know rap there's a lot of ego in rap music so 
I'm trying. I've like, there's a lot of stuff I don't. I used to rap about that I won't rap about anymore. Like I won't touch on like guns or like you know narcotics or anything mm-hmm. like that. Cause yeah, that's cool when you're 19 and you're like experimenting and learning right. stuff and you're listening to like Waka Flocka and Chief Keef and yep. you're, and you're hearing it and you're just emulating shit that you're hearing. But then when it becomes your real life and um people think that's who you are or don't believe that's who you are which it's not who i am right it's like uh yeah i I just want to distance myself from that type of thing have you had so i'm assuming that you had written like written music like that obviously like with the scrapped it yeah and scrapped it yeah but has a lot of it come out that people were kind of of affiliating you like a lot a lot of my most popular songs are like about like guns and stuff and you don't perform those live um no i'm doing like one song on this tour just because it's my first tour and i want like i don't want to let people down but like after this like definitely not like it makes me mad uncomfortable to do it really yeah like what would be like a time what i mean Give me an example, like what the song would say, something that just seems so ignorant to you now. Just anything about gangbanging, guns, whatever. Like, was that like something? Were you ever affiliated in that sense? No, there or just you just no. enjoyed that I was type just, of like, yeah, content. Definitely, definitely, I was just listening, and I still do. I of still course, love yeah, rap music. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's like day one. You know what I mean? Like, um, but it just doesn't. It doesn't resonate with you. As no, far as especially being white and being like coming from punk rock and stuff. Like, it, it's like people are like oh, you're not really about this, you're not really about that. And it's like, yeah, you're right, I'm not. So, yeah. so And like hearing that enough is like, okay, I'm going to get scrutinized about this. And there are a lot of rappers who, who still do it. There are a lot of rappers who don't bang that talk about banging. Like, of course. Like that's their whole aesthetic musically. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I, I just, I've tried to be more honest. That's like got to be a tough thing to do too, to try to be honest like that because it's easy I think the first thing for a rapper is like you almost want to just show off that you can actually spit like everyone else can mm-hmm. spit. So you're going to talk about whatever makes sense to you because you've learned from what you Exactly. you know soaked up. Exactly. But how how have you felt the kickback? Have you announced this? Like have you said this to Yeah, I've fans? talked about this before. You talk, do you talk about it at every show? Like do you say something? No, nah, not at the shows I don't I don't mention it. But if you follow me, you know, you know this. That's what's going on. Yeah, like my last like two albums have like no narcotic talk no gun talk right. nothing like that so what's like the focus of your music right now um i don't know i'm trying to be a little more conscious i guess mm. i'm trying to um like uh definitely i've done like i've gotten more melodic yeah like more singing maybe even poppier right at times um and more like hook based maybe i've tried to write more solid songs um but right now, like with what I'm doing next, I'm trying to be conscious. Like I, uh, I'm just trying to have some more substance right. to what I'm saying, and but at the same time, I still like like flex music. You know have what fun. I mean? Like yeah, right. definitely smoke weed, hang out girls, that type of shit. Who would you say is like your biggest influence in that type of music right now? Bones. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely like my favorite rapper. I don't listen to a lot of rap music. I listen to like indie, like singer songwriter, female vocals, like girl playing acoustic guitar. Type who, who, shit. Who's your Who's your main? Like right? Gregory and the Hawk, hmm. or like I don't know. I don't know who else. Gregory and the Hawk. I'm... Yeah, she's like I think she's from New York or Philly. Have East you ever reached Coast. out? Try to collab? No, never. I wish she's super fire though. Why can't you? I don't know. Be tight. I don't know how that works. DMs, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know. DMs seem yeah, to like get a lot of shit done know. from people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. But yeah, I listen to a little rap music. I listen to Bones for sure. Like I follow him. Like mm-hmm. I'm waiting on every drop from him. Have you collaborated with anybody like uh, in in rap yet? Yeah, I just did. I did a collab with a German guy named Sierra Kid. That's the only collab I've ever done. That's the only feature I've ever done. And I just did my second feature with. Uh, Big Baby from Tampa, Florida. Mm. He was he did the first leg of the tour with us. Oh, really? Yeah, he's Dope. super fire. Really? Yes. Big Baby. All right, I'm gonna link these. He's in the show so notes. he's so tight. Really? Yeah. How'd he's you good. find him? Just his music. Internet. Yeah, and then like linking up with him, like him and his team, like they have no ego. They're yeah. like they're good, good people. Like he's got good people behind him, and he's a good guy. See, I like this shit because there's no like cornballness to it. sort of like trying to like fucking flex or be yeah. walking around yeah, exactly. armed and shit like exactly. come into it with the open mindset that's what i'm trying to push how but i mean two features that's it how how have you not or what's holding you back from allowing yourself to feature on anyone uh, else's shit or, like, i feel like it's a it's it's not necessarily like i don't want to do it it's yeah. like uh 
a songwriting thing. Like in the sense of like 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 I produce everything. Yeah. So it's like I can't just like get a beat from somebody and then like rap over it. Like and I have to be, be like, okay, I need the drums to cut out here. I need to like I need to bring this instrument in here. I need to take this out here. Like I have to be able to dissect everything about it. And um would you say you write that way? Like you write with the stems, like to be able to have yeah. the ability to like write yeah. and you know exactly what instrument you want to play with it? Yes. What's the, the process for that? Like um, for you for like a table? I'm like heavily sample based. Yeah. So like I'll go on YouTube and find something like from a movie or like from an old song or like from a video game. Mm-hmm. And then I'll take that and put it in Fruity Loops and I'll mess with it, cut it up, make it backwards, slow it down, speed it up, whatever, figure it, find something cool to do with it. Because I feel like that gives you like, um, an organic sound as opposed to like putting a VST in Fruity Loops and then poking some little notes and then slapping an 808 on it and right. hi-hats and it's like a trap beat yeah. for like an anti-smoking commercial. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen those. Yes, I know, I know exactly what <laughs> you know what I mean though? Yeah, that's crazy. So like, so I'm, I'm very sample based. So I'll do that and then uh, I'll make it instrumental and then I'll try and write and I'll probably write like half of something and then I'll record it and I'll either be like, okay, this works or I'll be like, this is garbage. And then I'll make another beat right. sometime. I never force anything. Everything just happens. But all everything you've written has been sample based? Or do you No, put- I've done stuff before that I composed for sure, but mostly I do sample based beats. Would you say it's more important for you to like deliver a sound that you think is more important than than worrying about some iTunes sales or some shit? Like, yes, definitely. I never, I have never considered like, is this going to sell? Yeah. Like definitely there's stuff that I've made that I've been like, oh, that's like, that's like, like there are songs um, that have hooks that right. where I'm like, okay, that's catchy. Like that's, that is a uh, ninety nine worth. Yeah. That's like, like um, music industry standard. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that's up to par. People are going to rock with that. Right. People are going to recognize that I can write a song. But then there's other shit like I'll just do like free form, like a freestyle, like not that I make it up, but like there's no chorus. Right, like right. it's just bars. It's yeah, just, yeah. The beat just plays and I just rap mm-hmm. through the beat. Um, but yeah, when I'm when I'm making stuff, I never ever consider if it's going to sell until after the fact. Like if it's and I never to... like, I scrap like probably for every 10 beats I make, I get like one or two keepers. Really? Yeah. Um. So I scrap a lot of shit and and uh yeah no I I never worry about if it's going to sell or not until after the fact. And if if it's tight and it's not going to sell, I still put it out. Yeah, right. as long as it's tight. Yeah, yeah. So I think it was interesting how you earlier you were talking about um like getting enough money and then moving your mom into a spot mm-hmm. with you like how long were you not with your like your parents or whatever like Um Cause when did that? Probably like two years. So it was like two years, like getting yeah. out of high school, basically. Yeah. And then did I mean did any of that influence your writing? Cause I feel like you. Nah. Cause did, when I first started rapping, it was just purely flex music, yeah. purely like stupid gun drug talk, mm-hmm. purely like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So currently, is your mom still living at your spot? Like no, the, no, no. She's uh she lives in Kansas City now. She's chilling. Now. Oh, word. Yeah, she's right. way better now. She's That's working dope. and stuff. Yeah. She come out to your shows. No, nah, she hasn't. Really? Well, my shows, I don't do like local stuff. Oh yeah, true. I guess what is there? Do you how, do you ever open for anything like? Uh, the I'm about to do an opening tour for uh, Hippie Sabotage. They're like a DJ yeah, yeah, I know those dudes. duo. Yeah, so I'm about to. Do, I don't know if I can say that, but I did. Um, Oops. It, it's it's supposed, I think it announces like next week. Have you ever worked with them, or is that just they're coming? No, through? they're just. Um, I think we have mutual a mutual connection Dope. at Paradigm and they're giving me a cool opportunity. Their shows are always like crap. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard of Kembe X? Have Never. you heard of Kembe? I don't think so. Look him up. Um, I lived with him for a while but he's from Chicago mm-hmm. and I went to those dudes' house in San Diego because mm-hmm. he's been writing a bunch of shit with them and they got oh, like cool. really cool sounds and they brought him on their tour uh-huh. uh, and it was his first tour ever and they just like grabbed him and brought him with and yeah. he literally, it was like and they were just like I think I was there when they just got off tour with it, and it was like, man, that was crazy. There's like three thousand people at this thing, blah blah. blah. I'm like, and they've never played before. Right. That was like their first shows. Right. They were just talking about how yeah, that's incredible, insane that is. So what was like the first? What was your biggest show you played? Uh, Brooklyn, this Brooklyn? tour, yeah, like stage dive first song, Woo! whole crowds jumping off stage. Oh, I saw the, the clip whole... from that. Yeah, that looked hard as fuck. Yeah. How many people were there? You think? It was like 
a little over 250. You sold that out? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was incredible. It was like the culmination of my life's work. What's funny is that, like, I feel like a lot of artists, when I studied it, when I was, like, in music, would get their rise from opening, like, supporting acts, mm-hmm. and, like, that was really all you had, because you're yeah. fucking in Missouri, you're from Iowa, where you're right, from wherever. Right. But you're, all your fame seems to, like, be coming from YouTube. Mm-hmm. Was that, like, your main source, or do you, uh, yeah. Spotify or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, I never did any, I, I, like, this is my first tour, like, I didn't do, I did my first show, like, two months ago. Shut up. Yeah. Dope. I've been on stage before. But not, like, it was your set. Uh, well, I mean, like I was playing guitar, playing drums. Oh, right, yeah, but from singing, that, side. but never like, never like doing this. Wow. Now. So, so yeah, um, I just use the internet. I mean, a lot of people where I'm from, they try to rap locally, and it just doesn't work. There's no mm-hmm. scene. There's no scene. What were your tactics like? What, what? I mean, I know you said you were just uploading content, but did you eventually start to see like something that people were like gravitating towards and start aiming your content that way, or were you just literally just wait? Just hit? doing whatever I want. Wow. I tried to do uh, like a video a month at least. Yeah. Like upload to YouTube once a month at least. Like when I first started, I never did like albums or like tapes. Yeah. I just, Songs. I just, I would like. Spend a week trying to make a song, and then on the weekend, on my day off, I'd be like, "Okay, I made a song. Let's do a video for it." And I cut it all up, uploaded the next day. What were you doing for work, like while you were making? Music? I was a janitor. You were a janitor? Yeah, I was a janitor for like five or six years. Where at? Like a um, at first I was at the Department of Transportation, which was super tight. Yeah. And then, uh, and that was like part time. What was tight about it? It was just low key. It was like no responsibility. You show up high. Easy money. Yeah. And cool. then and then after that it was at a at a hospital. And that's where that's when like whenever I got the hospital gig that was full time. Um, I was making more money. So then I was like spending all my money on like clothes and gear and mm-hmm. like um investing it into this. Your content and yeah. all that shit. Mm-hmm. Damn, so did you see the content grow? Like, that was the transition period, like, where your content yeah, started definitely. to shine a little bit? So yeah, what definitely. were you doing? Was it still, like, your girl shooting the shit at this time? or? Yeah, when I worked at the hospital, it was, like, me and her and my friends. When like, did... I would shoot a lot of it. Like, I've always used cameras, like, my whole life. Like, yeah. I love using a camera. It's super fun to me. So, like, a lot of my first videos, like, if you watch them, like, the B-roll or shit that I'm not in, I'm shooting that. Mm-hmm. And then, like, my performance shots, like, my girl or my homie would film. That's fucking tight. Mm-hmm. So when did you, when did you, uh, n- like, see your first spike, like, in the internet? Like- um, I dropped a video called Wavy, and it did, like, 300,000 views in a month. And that was, like, that was the fastest rate of, like, success I've had. But it wasn't, like, it's not, like, like Lil Yachty or something. Right. You know what I mean? It wasn't, like, I woke up tomorrow and, like it was crazy. Like I couldn't go in public. Everybody knew who I was. Right. You know what I mean, it was just like 300,000 views, but it was, it was definitely exciting. No, it's a dent. Though. But That's a good. Dent. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But that was like the fastest, like I said, nobody's close on me or nothing. No, I've never had like some overnight explosion. But what was, uh, at that point when you got, you said 300,000 views, mm-hmm. what, how many subscribers did you have at the time? I have no idea. Maybe 30,000. Maybe less. I don't know. That's crazy. You never figure out like what the source was that it came from. It just like popped yep. up on YouTube and people just started clicking. Yep. Wow. Yep. It's so funny how people think this should be so calculated, and you're mm-hmm. just like, nah, I don't know. Yeah, I was just dropping videos. I mean, that's gotta be a good fucking feeling, though. So, what? Well, it hits three hundred thousand. Does it keep growing? Or are you instantly yeah. trying to put something else? Yeah, out? it's at like three mil now. Three mil. But that's uh, I mean, that's like two years old. So like everything, like I said, everything I've done has been a slow burn. Right, right, right. Like you just, it's slowly accumulated. When yeah. did it hit a million? Do you remember that? No, it's on my IG, but I don't know. Uh, it was, it was this year. What did you do? Like you mean? I, I was just at the crib. I just popped a bottle of champagne on Instagram. <laughs> said, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I think I did a Doritos commercial one time, like where you do the competitions and you try to win like a million dollars or some stupid shit. And the video I posted it got like. 100,000 views one randomly like six months after I uploaded it just uh-huh. like spiked yeah and I remember the, like it hit it and we're like fuck and we like went out to the bar and like we were like drinking a bunch of shit yeah yeah got f- super hungover and then it hit 200,000 the next day that's fire and we're like ah but all the comments were like other people in the competition and they were just like director should kill himself uh, this video is trash all this hey, shit I'm I like damn that. what the fuck I know the feeling bro yeah how do you deal with that like uh, having comments coming in like people pr- I mean obviously it's gotta be hard A being white B, you have a very punk image, which is different than mm-hmm. I would say. Like, I think a lot of artists want to be looking punk, but mm-hmm. you look like you've lived punk, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. It's mm-hmm. a different 
vibe like yeah i feel you but what have you dealt with any shit like that i mean because yeah definitely like that comes back to like the like the gun talking stuff and like and that's like why i didn't want to like put myself out there as a rapper at first because i'm like broke white corny you know what i mean like if somebody comes up to you and is like hey i rap you're like oh yeah Mm -hmm. you rap huh bro you know what i mean so like i it was that's why it was a guilty pleasure for sure but um the internet scrutiny is like it, uh, the way I do things is like, if I tomorrow if I upload a video with World Star, yeah, if I let somebody else in on my product, um, there's gonna be a fuck ton of hate that comes with that shit, right? But when I l- upload to my YouTube channel with my subscribers, it's gonna be a hundred thousand kids who support me, right? So like, I don't really get fucked with that bad like definitely they're like any hate i get is like passerby on Mm -hmm. youtube recommended but like anytime i drop it's just like overwhelmingly positive it's just you know it's like a flood of these a hundred thousand subscribers right who are like support oh you 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 dropped again yeah i hit like before i even heard the song like so yeah um it's really not too bad you know what i mean like there are definitely people who come through and talk shit. Yeah. And there are definitely people who listen to me and like, ah, oh, you no good anymore. Every song sounds the same, like shit like that. But nah, it hasn't been anything. It, it's it's never too bad, you know what I Does mean? Does that transfer over in your, um, like now you're just getting to put two months of performing, like uh-huh. having an opportunity to like play shows and shit. Do you feel, does that ever like, make you nervous for a show that you gotta almost impress a room or nah. have to deal with that feedback or nothing? Nah, shows don't make me nervous at all. Really? Yeah. What's like, your show like? Um, I don't know. The song turns on, I walk out. You have a DJ? It's just you and a DJ? Yeah, well, and like two friends. Tony's up there with the camera. Yeah. Um, my guy AJ, he's like my day one. He's like my assistant. He does like everything for me. Dope. Like literally. I just pay the bills. He does like it. Well, he... I make the money, he takes it to <laughs> pay the bills. Right. He's that dope. guy for me. So, yeah, he's up there with me. And then uh, our friend Trace from school, we've known him, like, our whole life. So, yeah, it's, like, me and, like, those four guys. Damn. Yeah, and we just do the songs, and the reception is incredible. What, uh, how long is your set? An hour. An hour? Yeah. Dope. And is there support on the shows? Like, I know um, you went on sometimes. tour. Sometimes. The What's His Name was on the road Yeah, with you. Big Baby did, like, the first leg, and then... He dropped off after Texas because he just went to the UK. And then we had some local support in Colorado. And then now Roy Purdy. I don't know if you know who he is. Oh, why does that name sound familiar? Um, he, like, dances on YouTube. He's, like, an internet personality. But he does some music, too. So he's opening these next two shows. Oh, dope. Yeah. Just, like, performing like in that way or mm-hmm. just music? Doing music, yeah. Sick. He's got a few songs that he's doing. So you got this show coming up. You got Friday. Or uh, right now it's Tuesday. Tuesday? Is it? I don't know what I day don't it either. is. I'm terrible. Yeah, with it's shit. Tuesday. So I have a show tomorrow, Wednesday, and then a show Friday. That's tight because the Roxy's uh, like literally right up the street from my house. Mm-hmm. And um, I know this was like super last minute, but you guys just drove from Vegas. Did you perform in Vegas? No. So you guys were just there? Yeah, we just laid low. And How was that? It was amazing. What'd you guys do? Just absolutely chilled? Like, yeah, chilled hard. Like, we went out and had a few drinks like two nights. Yeah. But nothing crazy at all. What um we just relaxed mostly. What was like the best fan experience so far? Cause that's what that's this is what the crazy thing is. I've worked with, like with a lot of YouTubers that have literally found their fame only on the internet, so mm-hmm. they never ever went out and have I think fan this, interaction. Yeah, and it's weird, but once you finally get to experience it, I mean, you've been fucking with the fans for two, three years, whatever, mm-hmm. and now you get to meet them. You know what I mean? Like I don't know that like it's anything personal with any like one fan, but like. Like, the Brooklyn show, like, being able to, like, stage dive into all these kids who know every fucking word, like, that's, like, that's, like, the whole reason I ever did any of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, to go to a show with a bunch of people, you know what I mean? That you didn't ever meet. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, like, uh, and, I, yeah, I couldn't really think of any, like, one experience. Like, I've been doing meet and greets, like, every night. Oh, for real? Yeah, so I definitely get, like, one-on-one time with kids. Yeah. But... It's nothing. It's like the show is like the best experience with the fans for sure. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So what what do you look forward to for the future as far as like new music and and working on projects? Because now okay, so now like like I said earlier, the way I know you is through Tony, and mm-hmm. Tony has been shooting all your shit. How many videos has he done for you? Ten. Ten. Twelve. Ten that are up. We probably shot like sixteen by now. 
Yeah. I'm sorry, you guys we scrapped can't a couple. hear that because I'm broke and don't have a fucking He said 10, 10 that are up, we've probably shot 16. 16? Yeah, we've scrapped a few. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So, you, when did you guys meet? Fuck. Because is, to- is he the first, is he the first like, other creative you let in besides just, like, your homie? Yeah, shoot? I don't know any musicians. I don't know any camera dudes. I don't know, I don't know anyone who's creative. Fuck. Yeah, so, like, me and him meeting was, like, he's, like, the friend that I always needed and right. never had, like, is, like... A breath of fresh air. Like, all my friends just smoke weed and play video games. Yeah, and get shit done. Yeah, and then, like... Play gamer tags. Yeah, and then I met him. I was like, oh, we can talk about music and clothes and movies and, like... Right. Yeah, How'd sure. you guys link? Um, the guy who does my tattoos, Colin. Mm. Um, he was he mentioned Tony, and I was like, oh, man, I've seen his shit. And, like, I would love to, like, work with him, ask him to do something with me. But I was intimidated. And then Colin was like, don't worry, I got you. So Colin <laughs> the- hit him up. And then Tony hit me back. That's tight. Yeah. You guys seem like good fucking friends and shit on the internet. Maybe you guys hate each other in real life. Nah, this is like my brother, bro. That's right. I'd die for dude. That's dope. Damn. Fuck. I love this because it's just such a natural (laughs) ride. Like, you literally have such a natural ride. Yeah, it's cool, man. I love it, too. It's like, I don't want to be Drake. I don't want to be Justin Bieber. Like, I don't want to be bothered. I want to... Like, I want to go to the show and, and people can bother me there. Not that they bother me, but you know what I mean? Like... Yeah. Um... Aren't you fearful that because that is a nice thought, but I don't think that's a fucking reality for many people. Like if you if say your song gets a hundred, I just feel like billion it's a, views. You don't have to do all that press and shit, though. You know what I mean? Like if 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 like if somebody wants to interview me, that's like someone that will propel me. Like yeah, you don't have to do that. Like you can you can get. You can have a million. I could stop today, and of I, I have a video with three million views. Right. And next week, I'm not going to be shit. You know what I mean? So it's kind of it's kind of in your hands. So say in a sense. It, well, it, being independent, especially right, like, it's in your hands. Say tomorrow, because this is an inter- that was an interesting comment. Say tomorrow, the Breakfast Club hits you up wouldn't and the Today Show. Wouldn't do it. You would say no. Yeah, would not do it. Definitely not. That's so fucking crazy because I feel like the whole goal as an independent artist is to find the exposure and grow the brand as it, as it is or whatever on your own. So y- no, you would I'm prefer- like super introverted. That's tight. Like I just wanna, I wanna, I don't wanna go to studio. You only I would want- go to studio and work for and write music for other people, but no, I don't want to be. What do you mean? What you wouldn't go to the studio for your own music? Like what do you mean? I'm not gonna sign a record deal and then go to a studio and work with a bunch of producers, busters and all that, that I don't know, right. like. That's never. I'm never gonna do that. It's almost until they're your friend. That's when you will yeah. start to actually yeah, like yeah, open yeah, up and yeah, yeah. That. Like people who come at you, like people who the first thing they say to you is like, "Yo, let's collab." Yeah. It's like, no, I'm not gonna collab with you. Like, right. You should be friends first. Yeah. You know what I mean? Damn. That's how I got this interview, though. <laughs> no, but that's cool. let, let me collab with them. Let me get them on the thing. But no, I love it. no, that's different though. No, because he's my friend. Yeah, 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 you trust him. If it was some guy that I didn't know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, like, uh, or what? what I don't mean this to sound sideways at all, but like I did this for him, for right. sure. No, for sure. But yeah, yeah. like, you know what I mean? No, and I appreciate that. But it's like if he says you're good people, yeah, yeah. I know that you're good people, right? Like I could take his word. You know what I mean? Whereas like if it's some dude on the fucking internet. It was like, and it, I like even still, like I might have done this if Tony hadn't asked me to do it. Right. I like I, this is low key. Mm-hmm. I very much like low key. I got you. Yeah. That's tight. So then, what do you do for like fun outside of that? Like when you're on the road, is I it just like the house? So dude. when you per- okay, let's ask this: When you perform a show, you do the meet and greet. Obviously, you try to is it paid? Is that that's paid to like get? Yeah. To meet, the whatever? tickets cost a little more. Okay. Cool. So outside of that, after a show. It's all said and done. Are you trying to linger around and still? Because you know the kids. There's some kids out there that didn't have the money for the meeting. Yeah, groups. sometimes it depends. Like I don't really like try to do that, but if it happens, like you, I'll definitely give you a picture. Mm. Like that, I never deny anybody. But if the shows get bigger, is your goal to like get off the stage and get get out of like get as far away kind from of, the people? Kind of. It just depends. Like it just depends. Where's that come from? What do you mean? Like being an introvert, like to be try, low key? yeah, trying to be low key. I don't know. It's so I'm funny, just to anxious. Be like, yeah, but like, you're like a bubbling rapper, like yeah. singer songwriter, whatever. Yeah, yeah I'm a Gemini, so like I'm a, a Gemini. Really? Yeah, my personality is very split. Mm. It's I like, feel that for sure. That's like, fucking crazy. Like on the internet and shit, I'm an extrovert, and then in real life, I'm like 
but yeah. are there moments in real life that you could ever be like like something just you know what i mean like there's like a motivation no of definitely i'm an introverted kids. extrovert right for sure there's some complex shit here at the black window cream yeah. podcast today yeah, bro. Sure. um so what's so what's like the the next video you guys are gonna drop do you already have it recorded yeah we did like four videos on this tour and you're just waiting um i'm waiting to get home to edit Okay, so you still edit the shit? Yeah. Or do both of you guys edit? I edit it. Sometimes uh, Tony will do some color stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that was the deal. I was like, you shoot the videos, I'm going to edit them. What do you edit on? Because it's me, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. I'm like self-conscious. What do you edit on? Uh, Sony Vegas 10. Maybe. Holy shit. Yeah. Sony Vegas and you make your beats on Fruity Loops? Fruity Loops 10. That's so crazy. Yeah. Do you ever try to use anything else? Like, uh, mm-hmm. He fucking- tried to get me to use Premiere. I said, no. Nope. No, I got, I got, I got to keep the train rolling, bro. Damn, that's fucking. Great. <laughs> how do you do? You learn your shit through YouTube, like finding. That's how tricks? I did learn. Yeah, definitely. Was it YouTube? Yeah. Wow. That's how I learned Vegas and and like making skate videos. Yeah. Like what? I started on like Windows Movie Maker. Right. Making like skate videos. Uh, same thing. With a DV camera, yep. with fisheye. Yep. Death lens. That's fucking tight. Yeah. Were you, were you good at skating or shitty? I was pretty good. You were good? Yeah. See, I was like, never got better than a kickflip. Yeah. And barely could do that shit. So yeah. I just ended up filming everybody else. Yeah, I was jumping down, down like 10 stairs doing like. I did a 10 stair once. Some handrails. I didn't do a handrail. Yeah. Damn, fucking weak. Yeah, nah, no, you're all right. <laughs> so, what, like, do you have motivation to like invest? into bigger budgets as far as your videos go as far as like yeah that's cool but But you say like you don't want to collaborate with people like you would never try to come out to la and get a production like a team to produce a video then then i wouldn't be successful if i did that in what in what sense because kids want to see real life they want to see my videos are real life my videos are like me in tony's fucking apartment smoking weed oh right i see that's real life Hmm. and and that's what kids want to see if your life became a real in a sense that eventually it was very easy for you okay let's not even say you get enough money to like buy penthouses i would do the same thing i would let tony shoot it we might get a better camera right some more lenses i would not pay like like it's just whack to me when i see like a video with like 10 model girls in it all paid to be there yeah dudes like covered in jewelry Mm -hmm. like sometimes that's cool like what's the migos video where they're like in the fur in the snow like that's fire that's oh yeah creative. that one was dope that's what i'm saying like if you could find ways like, that's to, like, cool yeah but um because sometimes you have to have a team to shoot that shit that's what i learned yeah like here. if it's cool it's cool for sure but there there are some big budget videos that are like this fucking sucks i don't want to see this i want to see this dude like just just chilling i want right. to see him in his crib i want to see him in the hotel room he's staying at after the show i want to see him in the studio like i was very that's like going back to like bones and shit like yeah it's very punk rock ethics. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to pay models and shit. Right. Like, it's just, it's it's corny to me. It's not tight to watch. I want right. to see somebody real deal. Like, if you watch my videos, you can see them get better. For sure. So, just from, like, quick research, I saw them, like... Yeah, so I awesome. feel like that's, like, tangible for kids and for me, too. It's yeah. like It's like I'm documenting my life right with music videos mm. which is like the fucking coolest thing i could ever think of absolutely that's super dope yeah like like this is my first tour like one of the videos we're doing is just a tour video oh, of course you know what i mean like it's like fucking sh- like shit blown past in the van window right. the shows like that type of were shit were you shooting some of that too did would you ever yeah ever- i shot a little bit of it yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> what camera what do you even know his camera like a sony 5D the 5d mark three yeah so you just you just grabbing it and grabbing the angles and shit that's yeah, dope yeah. he does most of it right but like if he's driving or something i'll film that's tight yeah fuck man that's so interesting to me yeah because i feel like it's just always pressure to like want more and you're like i want like le- <laughs> i want less no i definitely could use a little more like but, i want I mean, like my mom to not have to work that'd be ill you know but i mean? think you're on the right path because if you keep everything in-house that's like collecting bigger checks for the homies and like you could still do brand deals or right, whatever right. the way you want them right to be i'm not cutting anybody anything bro that's sick yeah Fuck. it's cool it's cool there was a time when i i'm glad like i'm 25 now mm-hmm. um i'm glad that this is happening when i'm 25 why because if it was happening when i was 19 i would be fucking i would be in trouble you'd be out in the fucking hood yeah. 
I'd be getting up to some shit. Yeah. I'd be like, you know, drinking and like making an ass of myself and like tweeting problematic shit. Oh, and like, God. you know what I mean? Yeah, just not the right. Yeah, you're right. There's always and a time I'd be for like, something. if somebody offered me something, I'd be like, oh, record deal, sign that shit, like straight away. You know what I mean? So now I mean, it's like, if people make me an offer, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, talk to my lawyer, like straight away. And like, even then, like, I'm what not, you, yeah, I'm what not do you gonna tell? sign it. I was gonna I'm say, not what do you tell your anything. lawyer? Like, this is just. I'm not gonna sign anything. <clears throat> but what <laughs> if you, what if a label came to you and told you you can do exactly what you're doing? We're just gonna put distribution behind you and take a tiny, tiny percentage. Yeah, of that's it. cool. That's cool stuff. You could work a deal. Like I that. still don't know. I just don't know. It just and I don't believe that there's a, a world where that exists. Yeah, me neither. They're gonna tell you that it's catered to you. Like mm-hmm. you know what I mean? At the end of the day, these dudes are trying to get paid, bro. You're an animal in a cage to them. Yeah. At the end of the day, like they don't, they don't know you. They don't have to do this shit. Right. They don't have to be out there and talk to kids and get hounded for photos and stuff. Not that like, that's a terrible position to be in. Right. But industry guys have no empathy for artists. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, no, it's yeah. just money. Yeah, it is just money. It's just money. They're like, yeah, we want you to go do this. Right. Whatever. Damn. We're getting paid. Would you say that um, you could ever see yourself? working with other artists to help them grow in a position like you're in right now like if they're cool cuz you kind of created like a not like a template i mean you just did what felt right but i mean yeah. like if you look at the way youtubers are living their life now uh-huh. they've found that scheduling post and making sure that they're consistent yeah. like bi-weekly monthly yeah, yeah. daily is growing so like yeah i don't do that at all what do you, i thought you said you were doing once a month I ju- yeah once a month that's the template yeah. and then uh i just drop it when it's done are you doing SoundCloud stuff too, or do you just post? Repos? Yeah, I'm on SoundCloud. I don't. No, I don't sell reposts or anything like that. No, I mean, like, do you ever just like? I'm just saying, like, you're just taking the songs you put on YouTube and uploading them to SoundCloud. There's no different format than just the right. same thing. Yeah, yeah. Are you getting much attention on there? Or? Yeah, SoundCloud is decent. Yeah. I don't monetize my SoundCloud. I didn't even know you could monetize SoundCloud. Yeah, you can. And there's fucking hella ads on it. Oh, that sounds terrible. Yeah, but like for real, like the nice payouts, like YouTube has like gone downhill the mm-hmm. nice payouts are like spotify and really apple music yeah they have great um like revenue splits so uh, streams is, has that been like very helpful for you or are yeah you i didn't do that for like forever i didn't do that for like the first year yeah i didn't upload to spotify and shit i was like fuck spotify and all that shit but then because i was trying to be punk you know but right. then um i had an album together that was like pretty solid and uh a dude i go to for advice industry dude who's just a fan genuinely um he was like yeah you got to put it on spotify it's too good like you, it, this is going to take care of you and so that's when i started doing that i always heard that it wasn't that great like the the splits are like very very small yeah maybe that's it tight. is but just i don't know at this point as far as i could tell it's like the most frugal shit thing i've had so do you use that and try to implement that in your in the directions of how you push your music now, like versus like aiming. You know, I mean, obviously you'd want say your video got ten million views on YouTube, mm-hmm. but you make more money if your song it was on got, Spotify. Yeah, yeah, you try to not do that. really. I'm never. I'm. Not, I don't know what I'm doing, dude. Like, I'm just <laughs> like for real. I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh fuck. Yeah, I'm probably like, I have like three SoundClouds. What do you mean, like? Like I have house? one SoundCloud that I started on, and I I was like remixes and mashups, and then I started putting raps on it, and then I was like, this doesn't feel right because I built a fan base through remixes and mashups, and yeah. then I started putting raps on it, right? And it just didn't feel right. But before that, even then, I made a second SoundCloud that was like lo-fi hip hop. It was like more mellow stuff, and maybe like even like funny stuff, like meme stuff. Under your name, or what was? Yeah, it? Oliver. Oliver, Oliver 2, and Oliver Francis are what they are. So that's like the stupidest shit I ever heard. And like my first one has like at least 50,000 follows and I haven't uploaded to it in like a year. What the fuck? And so like I just started from scratch with the third one. <laughs> yeah, man. You, it's dumb. Yeah, it's I know. Marketing. But it's like, I don't know, man. I follow my heart. Yeah, and it's working. Yeah, I mean, whatever the fuck. Somehow this sounds so naturally like a very lucky scenario where things just are popping in the mm-hmm. right way. Mm-hmm. I mean, congrats to you. Thank you. Thank was you. it, uh, Tony said that this was like your, you'd never really been to LA or travel much. Yeah, never. I was on a plane my first time this year. To where? New, to New York city. Yeah. For meetings or for, yeah, show? to meet with a label. Wow. Uh huh. How'd that feel? Uh, it was 
tight dude the plane was <laughs> the plane was super small and super sketchy yeah right they didn't have drinks they didn't have wi-fi because where'd you fly out of missouri yeah like out of kansas did people fly out of kansas Can- City? no i flew out of st louis oh oh yeah it was, yeah this flight was sketchy really yeah like the flight home was chill but like my first flight traumatized scares me, the fuck out of you it was like the plane was like tilting all crazy and it was super turbulent yep that's yeah. where you make the most friends, though, because you turn to that, like, 55-year-old mom. Right. And you're like, I'm Hold just, me. Yeah. And I feel for you, too, because I can tell. <laughs> no, so, it was chill, though. That was your first time going to New York? So, like, what? I, I, you just never, I, as far as being in Missouri, you never went outside? How, how I traveled. Like, I've been Chicago. east. I've never been west. Yeah, I never, I've been through New York City on tour. Um, I've been to Florida, Virginia. Um, never L.A.? No, I went to L.A. my first time this year. Damn. Yep. And then... uh like uh, my first time this year, and I've been here like three times now. This is like my third time. This here. is your third time. Yeah. So the first two times were those meetings as well. No, the first time was kind of just to do it. Um, well, actually, no. I was supposed to meet with some like manager type guys that I met with, but we kind of fell out. Never heard from them. Um, so I did that, and pretty much just did whatever I wanted. Like we just like hung out and smoked weed and went shopping and. It was chill. What the fuck did we even do? Yeah, I did the No Jumper podcast. Oh, yeah, dope. Um, but other than that, we just fucking chilled, bro. How did you get the No Jumper podcast? That thing's booming right now. Adam just hit me up. That's tight. He's yeah. always fucking figuring out people before mm-hmm. they get super huge. Yeah, yeah. He's a super cool dude, man. What happens when you start getting... I'm so interested to see where your career goes because I don't. Um, I feel like you love music a lot and uh-huh. love writing. Would you quit? Say your account starts getting millions of subscribers tomorrow millions and mm-hmm. you have the choice like do i keep making them happy and like becoming popular or if you quit what would you do would you try to write and be like low-key background type yeah person? i probably would never quit yeah maybe i would i don't know like um in my opinion like if there was no music mm-hmm. the world would keep turning so like there are things in life that are bigger than me rapping you know what i mean sure like if I got sick or something, yeah, or like my mom got sick or something crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah no, absolutely. Something like that could definitely stop me from doing it, and I would have like I wouldn't be worried about it, right? But, um, I'd probably never quit because of fame, really. Because like I said, I feel like that's in your hands. How like, you control it, as far as like, yeah, like you don't have to do it. If you're independent, you don't have to do all that press. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to do anything. Right. If you could sell out Madison Square Garden, you don't have to do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You don't have to book that show. Like, so it's just like <laughs> if you could sell out Madison Square Garden, you could say no. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's yeah. so tight. You know what I mean, though? Yeah. No, absolutely. If you're independent, you can do whatever you want. You yeah. Can do you whatever can... you're comfortable with. Right. So that's what I'm doing. What I'm comfortable with. I fuck with that. Yeah. Out here, I feel like it's you gotta say yes so you can say no. Like it took me a long time before I could say no to anything because you say yes to try to get yourself advanced. The door. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. But for you, right away, it's just like no. Nah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. The fuck that shit. So with um the private group that I have, I uh-huh. like ask them in advance if they can ask some questions or whatever. I did it last minute today, but okay. I had I had a couple, so I'm just gonna you can answer them however you want or whatever. Okay. Um. So. This girl, Taylor Marie, she said, Oliver, how many tattoos do you have and which one has the most significance? None of them have any significance. I He's got think, a lot. I'm looking I right now. I just think tattoos look nice. It's just fashion, honestly. Do you go to um, the uh, Iron Tiger. Tiger? Yeah, Iron Tiger. Yeah. Damn, shout out to Gabe. Yep. If he listens to this ever, that'd be yep. sick. Um, I don't know how many I have. I think like my sleeves are one. None of them mean anything to you? Not um, one? Not really. I have like my mother's middle name here. Janet. Yeah. Dope. Um, nah, these are my grandparents' names. That's dope. Good Life. That's a Kanye song. Yeah. That's, I, I would like to live the good life. That's right. Um, Yeah, nah, I just think tattoos look nice. Honestly, I just... And I didn't get tattooed till I was like 24. And uh, For real? Yeah, well, maybe You're 23. How old are you I'm 25. So, okay. which I'm really glad that I waited to get tattooed. Oh, but, yeah. Um, if I would have got I kind of learned right? about tattoos before i got tattooed like Mm -hmm. what's cool in tattooing like i have like very american traditional tattoos because Mm -hmm. i feel like in tattooing culture those are the tattoos to get you if you go to get tattooed and you want american traditional tattoos they're gonna look good they're gonna last 
the your tattooer is going to be happy to do them. Oh yeah, that type of thing. You know what I mean? Versus so, what asking for some like obnoxious shit. Yeah, some no outline portrait that, or galaxy that's going to turn into a blob when you're an old man. You right. Know? You got to think about like the longevity. Like when I'm an old dude, my tattoos are going to look hard. Right. You know what I mean? But you have to get them retouched and shit. Is that like yeah, a definitely, thing? definitely. You get them touched up. I mean, you don't have to, but like you think, can't, like yeah. think about being like an old man with a with a galaxy <laughs> sleeve. You know what I mean? That's not a right. good look. That'd be fucking tight. That's not a good look. <laughs> That so so yeah, I waited to get tattooed, and uh, yeah, I don't know how many I have. I got a bunch. I got a lot left to go though too. Yeah, you have to just creep his Instagram and try to piece it together yourself. Yeah, Taylor, bet. sorry. Bet. Um, this dude Joseph Cooper said, actually not Joseph Cooper. That's a different question. Trevor Carlson asked, okay. um, "What's your favorite failure story, and how did you ever learn from it?" Failure story. Yeah, do you have a failure story. Probably like being in bands. Yeah, like bands breaking up, failing. Um, that's that's kinda, a detrimental that's feeling. That's kind of broad, but yeah, definitely. Like, it's like, what am I gonna do? Like, because when you're in a band, you need other people. Mm -hmm. It can't just be you. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Failure story. That's tough. That kind of pushed my Instagram handles Ben Reverse World, mm -hmm. and it's always been like me versus the world because anytime I've ever tried to do something in uh -huh. groups, it never fucking works. Yeah, and I, that comes from making. Music yeah, like that's that. fire. Yeah, hell yeah. So, so probably being in bands and breaking up in bands. That's a good one. Yeah. Damn. All right. So then, what I mean, how do we find out the future shit? Where can everyone find you at on the internet? Find me on the internet, Oliver X Francis on everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's easy. That's me, Oliver X Francis everywhere. Well, I appreciate you driving from Vegas and then going to your Airbnb and having to get stopped by the fire. Well, yeah, did you see the fire? Right, currently yeah. people in LA right now, there's like a bunch of houses on fire. I think like yeah. 300 houses are. We didn't see like anything too crazy. But um, it fucked up the traffic. It was smoky as hell though, and yeah, the highway was shut down. It's crazy because that's pretty far from where we're at right now, and yeah. the ash has been setting over here. Yeah, like, ash is like floating through the sky. It's, it's gnarly, like, bro. Crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah, I appreciate you doing this. Thank, hey, you, thank you, man. Tony, thank you for, for hooking it up. Of course. Even though you can't hear him because I'm weak and don't have three mics. Nah, it's fire. <laughs> it's fire. All right, dog. Um, yeah, find him on the internet and catch a show. Wait, are you going to tour again after this? Yeah. When? Uh, February. The last week of February? The last week of February. Is that announced already? Uh, no, but it, um, when do you drop this? Sunday. Uh, close to then. Close to then? How yeah. many dates? I'm doing a week. A week? Yeah, I'm doing like five or six dates. Cool. So yeah. your major cities? Yeah, mostly like Texas. Okay, so you, yeah, we got a lot of black and okay people in Texas. Yeah. Go support the homie. Check it out. Buy some. Oh, yeah, you sell merch? That's what yeah. I was going to ask you. Is, is it merch like your revenue stream? Has that been like... Uh, it, It's like a part of it for in sure. In the shows? Yeah, yeah. Okay, dope. Definitely. So yeah, get some merch. Is it on your website or something? Yeah, they can find it. Okay, sick. All right, dog. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, dude. We out. Thank you so much. Yep, for sure. Love, bro. Yep. Bye, bye, bye. That's it for episode number nine with Oliver Francis. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Make sure to follow Oliver on all platforms and catch his next live show. I've shared links to the show notes. You can find that at blackwindowcream.com slash podcast. Leave a review on iTunes and let me know what you loved about this motherfucking interview. If you're interested in joining Black With No Cream's private group for creators, visit blackwindowcream.com slash join. And last but not least, buy some fucking ill-ass merch. Every sale helps me keep this thing alive. Subscribe to Black With No Cream. New episode every Sunday. See you next week, you bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah.